Well, thank you, Skylar Diggins Smith, for confirming what we already knew, which is the Phoenix Mercury hate you, and you don't like the Phoenix Mercury. Now, this story goes back away. I did a video last year on this when it was first announced Diggins Smith was going on maternity leave. I dared to outline how this was a brilliant option for WNBA players if they were wanting kids and hated team management, the coach, or teammates. Some agreed and some did not agree with this video. The nicest, meanest comment I ever got was from Antonia, who called me moronic on the topic, but she went on to say that she liked my content, so I told her, I would try to be less moronic in the future, which probably involves me not talking about maternity issues, but I lied. So here we go. Skylar Diggins Smith, part two. So what kicked this off? Well, a tweeter noticed that the Mercury did not tweet out happy birthday message to Skylar Diggins Smith. Tweeting or Xing, I don't know what you would call it these days, how disgraceful it is that at Phoenix Mercury Handle couldn't even pretend to wish Skylar Dig for a happy birthday. Such an irresponsible action that could have been avoided. And then Skylar Diggins Smith responded to this tweet by saying, They're not gonna acknowledge me this year, and it's okay, guys. We're not affiliated unless it's the checks per management. I can't even use the practice facility or any resources, but I still love the X Factor. The Phoenix Mercury's response to this is Diggin Smith is on maternity leave, and that's all they will say. It's maternity leave. She's on maternity leave. No comment, essentially. And then, of course, the WNBA crickets. <laughs> Which isn't surprising. So they have nothing to say about it. The Players Association has come in to say, you know, we're looking at it to make sure she's supported or something like that. And of course, with any issue, there are two sides. So if you're on team Skylar Diggins-Smith, it's how dare, how dare the Phoenix Mercury not support her. And they go into how she's not allowed to use the practice facilities. At the very least, she should be allowed into the practice facility and maintain her fitness and try to get back into shape. Or if they don't want her, they should have cut her and let her get on with her career and life. Well, here's the thing. You tend to get what you give. And by that, what I mean, if you are loyal and sort of show loyalty to an organization, then they're likely to do that in turn to you. But if you are a pain in the bum, constantly a pain in the bum, then the organization is not going to give you a damn thing. And that is what's going on with this case, essentially. So the Mercury are on the hook for Diggin Smith, who's on a super max contract for her 235 salary this year, come hell or high water, they will pay that regardless if she plays or not. And it's pretty obvious she does not plan on playing for the Mercury. So their options are to cut her, but that's not a good option because then she can just sign with another team and they're still on the hook for her salary. Or the other option is we can just let her sit and do nothing. Now, why would they do that? Sounds mean, yes, but see, this is not Diggin Smith's first time to be on maternity leave. You see, she was pregnant while she was playing with the Dallas Wings. And when she was with them, she was unhappy about the way that she was brought back after her maternity leave. She said the Wings pressured her and were not understanding regarding her postpartum depression. And then she went to the press as well, complaining about the lack of nursing facilities for breastfeeding and things like that and said all measures were inadequate. Now, this was prior to the current CBA, so the Dallas Wings were not required to pay her full salary. They could have just paid half of her salary. That's what the agreement was at the time 
per the agreement, but the Wings actually had agreed to pay her 115 k But she was still unhappy, sat out the whole season, then went to the Olympic trials and made the team, and then announced then that she was demanding a trade and would not return to Dallas. Dallas court her and then traded her to Phoenix, and voila, a new start in Phoenix with the big three, Skylar Diggins-Smith, Brittany Griner, and Diana Taurasi. And it went well the first year. They made it to the final, and they could not finish against Chicago. And then everything went to hell in Season 2 as Griner was detained in Russia, as you obviously know about. And then Skylar Diggins-Smith and Diana Taurasi got into it early in the season, a verbal altercation. I've done a video on this. I speculate it's about Taurasi's help defense. Others disagree with that. But basically, that's where the start of the fracture happened as well. The whole season, she was taking passive-aggressive shots at the coach. So she was pissed off when Nygaard came out saying it's not an all-star game without Diana Taurasi. You know what she was doing. She was just sticking up for her star player. And then Diggin Smith was overprotected. You know, she went out with this coach clown emoji and being just really passive aggressive on Twitter as well after the incident with Tarasi. And it just went the whole season. It sounds like she's grumpy. She's grumpy with an ESPN article that said nobody on the team liked her. You know, that's probably an overstatement. I'm sure there are factions in any team. And there was a faction that wasn't a Diggins Smith fan because she was a pain in the bum. And then it culminated in the game against New York where she's begging to be taken out of the game in garbage time saying, please take me out. I mean, come on. You're acting like a diva. I'm sure they were fine when she decided to step away because she'd just been a pain in the butt all season. So for this player, they are going to do her no favors. You come out, you criticize the go to the franchise. They're not choosing you over to Rossi this two-year pain-in-the-bum player they've had. And then, as well, you you were a turkey the whole season, undermined the coach, which didn't help. The coach was in a tough circumstance, but you sure as hell didn't help. So you think we're going to do you any favors by letting you use our practice facility and come out to the press and say how we haven't supported you or whatever passive-aggressive slant she might take? Hell no. So they're doing exactly what they should do. She's on maternity leave. She's supported. You know, if Diggin Smith needs a facility to work out, my God, she's making 235 k She can take some of that and rent out a gym for a few dollars. That's not the end of the world. She will go on. But anyway, that's sort of my take on it a little bit. You can tell I'm with the second take of management. And trust me, I have not been a big fan of the Mercury and what they do. Giving a pick swap to the Liberty was crazy in 2025. It just kills the rebuild because they could be tanking for a a blue chip player potentially while letting the GOAT Diana Taurasi retire in the sunset on her full max contract. You can't have to. You can't have Taurasi on a max contract and still be trying to compete you know, it's one or the other. You, you got to go Kobe like the Lakers did and just eat it, reward her for all the years, and then tank, get draft picks, hope for something good in the draft, and start the rebuild. But letting Diggins Smith sit on the sidelines pissed off, I've got no issue with that. She'll be a free agent next year, and God, who's going to sign up? Who's going to get on the Diggins Smith train? Because the next team always thinks, yeah, we're going to figure this out. You know, it ended it ended poorly with the Wings. It ended poorly with Phoenix. But no, it was just the wrong situation. When we get her here, when we get her in Indiana, this is going to be great. Or when we get her in Chicago, she'll be back near Notre Dame. We'll pair her with Notre Dame as well, Mabry. And it's going to be fantastic. They'll have to 
have an awkward press conference about that fight they had years ago and talk about how they're great friends and it was the heat of the moment. No, that that's the way I see that going down. That I, I think she'll wind up Chicago next year, but we shall find out. Anyway, if you like the content, then please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good night.